All right, in this video, I'm going to explain what PBR shaders are, how they work, and why you need to understand them and use them in all of your scenes. So if you've been modeling in Blender for any amount of time, you probably come to the realization that materials are super important. Good textures, good materials will give your scene or your objects or your stuff a photorealistic look or a styled look or just an awesome look. And if you don't have good materials or textures, your scenes are suffering a lot. You can always improve your materials or textures to make them look even better. And I'm going to show you one of the very first steps to that, which is setting up your node trees, using image maps and where to get them, things like that. All right, let's get started by making a few things. Let's make a cube right here. Let's move it up and let's make a plane, which is the flat square and hit S to scale it up. So we've got a flat plane and a cube. We're gonna apply our material to both of these just so we can get a better idea of what they're gonna look like. So right click on your cube, go to your materials tab and hit new. Material 001, you can name that if you want to right here, you don't have to. But if you're using more than one material in the scene, I definitely suggest naming things to keep things organized. Let's right click on the plane and apply the same material. So instead of clicking new, we're gonna hit this drop down and select material 001. Same material, right? Now this is important, go to your material preview view. So we're gonna turn on what's called shading, click on that button. Now we're gonna see there's nothing because this is just a basic white <laughs> shader. There's nothing happening. And I am using cycles render. So I'm going to drag this window down so we can start editing our nodes. Uh, to do that, put your cursor right in that tippy top corner and your cursor changes to a little crosshair. You can click and drag down and we've just split our window into two. Now we're going to use this top window for a shader window. So click on this uh, editor type and go to shader editor. Yay, here it is. I'm gonna press the letter N to get rid of that tab over there, that panel, and hold Alt to move around. You can also use plus or minus to zoom in or out. There we go. All right, so this crazy thing, these are nodes. These are little squares that have all kinds of complicated colored circles and faders and stuff on there. And uh, this is basically what our material is. So a PBR shader is basically a material for any mesh that uses multiple images to achieve a realistic result when light hits it, whether it's reflection or it's not reflective. Maybe it's bump or it's smooth. Is it metallic or is it not? Uh, is it very specularly reflective with shiny light spots or is it very dull with nothing to show where the light is. There's a lot of options here, and we're gonna go through most of the useful ones that are most commonly used. So the first thing we're gonna do for a PBR shader is we need to make an image node. So I did Shift A, search, just type in IMA for image texture. It automatically finds it. There we go. This is our first image texture, and we're gonna open up the first in a series of images for, uh, for one of these materials. So I'm gonna to navigate to my PBR folder. I have folders and folders of PBR shader images. You can get these all for free at CCO or CC0 textures. I don't know if it's a zero or an O. CC0 textures, uh, it's a really awesome website. It's amazing, it's free, I don't know how, but hey, it is, so don't ask questions. So I encourage you to go there, type in anything. Type in wood. You can find all these wood materials that look great. You can type in metal. I love the metal ones, they're very cool. You can type in rock. These are also really fun to play with. So let's get one that we're a little more familiar with. Let's get a metal texture that has some shape and some, some dirt and grime to it. Here we go, let's use this one. This is metal 23. I'm gonna download these images as JPEG 4K. You can get them 8K, but it is really big. Just the 4K version here is 88 megabytes. And these images do add up pretty quick. So don't go crazy downloading all these things you're never gonna use, because you're gonna be using up a lot of your hard drive storage. So here we go, here is the zip file with five images on here. Why five? Well, just hold on, I'll explain to you in a minute. I'm gonna move these images to my texture folder, and I actually have one for metal. And this is metal 23, which I probably already have. Oh, I don't, okay, cool. So I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it Metal 23. I like to name them how they were originally named on the website. In case someone says, that's an amazing texture, where'd you get it? I can say, hey, it's Metal 23 on this website and they can find it no problem. So I'm gonna move all my folder, all my images into Metal 23. Here we are. So let's look at the names. We've got Metal 23 underscore COL for color, underscore DISP for displacement, underscore MET for metal or metallic, underscore NRM for normal and underscore RGH for roughness. These are all different elements of the same surface. 
that we're all going to plug into Blender and it's going to give us a really sweet looking metal texture. All right, so I'm going to find those files now in my Blender file view. PBR, Metal, Metal 23, there it is. I'm going to open up my color one, COL. So here it is, this has the image. Let's plug in the color output to base color input and voila. So you may be thinking you made the coolest thing you've ever made. It looks photorealistic. It's amazing. But wait, there's so much more. We've only used one image map for this material. Remember, there's five of them. So let's look at the other ones and see where they go and what they do to our image. So I'm going to click on this image node and hit G for move and move it up a little bit. Now I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. We're going to put one here, Shift D one here, Shift D one here, and Shift D one here. There's five of them total because we got five in images from that website. Let's click on the folder to open. And then first we're going to open the metal image, enter. Next we're going to open the roughness image, enter. Then we're going to open the displacement right there, enter. And the last one, number five, is the purple looking normal image. Okay. Now let's route these and see where they belong. So metal is, you probably guessed it, metallic. Roughness goes into roughness. Now displacement normals are going to be combined. So we need to add two more nodes to make that work. Shift A, search for normal map, right there. And then Shift A, type in bump, right there. Let's plug in the normals from normal map into the normals of bump. So there we go. And then normals from bump to the shader normals input. All right, now let's map the rest of these images. So displacement, which is the image number four right here, we're going to do color to height and then color of your normals map to color of your normal map, <laughs> normal map node. Now the bump is intense. We do not want that much bump. Well, maybe you do, but for this case, we don't. So let's change distance to 0.05. There we go. It's just a little bit of bump. It's just rest. So I'm happy with that. Now what's going on is these images are um, basically controlling how much metallic there is, but not only how much, but where it is in this mesh. So if I do sh control shift and click on one of these images, I can preview an individual image map and see what it looks like. Let's preview the roughness. It's similar, but a little different. There's a lot more blacks in the metallic. If I go to roughness, it's a little more smooth. There's less contrast. If I go to displacement, it's even less, a lot more white. And the normals is very purple and weird looking. <laughs> uh, so how the way I'm previewing these images by holding control shift is because I have an add-on enabled called Node Wrangler. If you don't uh, have that enabled, let's go to this uh, menu over here, go to preferences, add-ons, and type in just the word node in the search bar and you'll see Node Wrangler. I believe it's included with all versions of Blender now. Make sure it's checked on. Okay, let's go back to Shader Editor. All right, now let's apply a UV map and get that set up. So click on your very first image, your color image, and do Control T. Again, this is a Node Wrangler trick, which uh, Control T makes a pre-made mapping node with a coordinates node, which is very, very helpful for these kinds of things. So let's size this down a little bit so we can get some more room. Alt is, remember, Alt is panning around, dragging. So let's grab this vector output from the mapping and, uh, and stick it into all the images. This is containing the UV map information. We want all these images to be on the same UV map because they are kind of, in the sense, the same image, just different layers or versions of uh, the material image. So uh, when they were made, but probably in Substance Designer or something like that, they were all made in parallel to be on top of each other. And that's how they are all so similar and how that's how they line up so perfectly. All right, so we've got the UV map applied to all these. Let's actually UV map this thing. And I'm going to show you the UV map editor. So make sure you've got your cube selected. Let's change this top window to UV editor and hit tab for edit mode. Now you see the squares. And for me, I've got the normal map selected for some reason. Let's change this to the color map. There we go. So we've got this cross looking diagram. These four squares are the four squares of our cube, right? There's four faces on a cube. We can move this around and see what happens. It's adjusting what is going on to each face. If I scale this up by hitting the letter S, I'm capturing more of the image on each face. And in this case, right there about, I'm getting the whole image copied on every face. It's the same image 
on all six faces. If I uh, scale it down, I'm getting a smaller portion of the image on each face. So less detail, but maybe greater size, I think. I maybe have that backwards. But you just get this to where you want it in your scene. And, uh, you know, it's something that you're happy with. Not too much detail, but just enough, depending on the scale of everything around it. Again, that's very important. Let's do the same to the plane. So select your plane, edit mode with tab. And now we see this simple square, which covers almost a whole map here. Now, if I scale this all the way down, like really small, what's going to happen? What do you think? We're going to see pixels and weird, ugly stuff that doesn't look very smooth. See the pixelization, pixelation over here? Not great. That's because this is so small. But remember, I downloaded the 4K version of this Metal 23. I could have downloaded the 8K version, which would be really huge in file size, but hey, I would have so much more detail. So if you need that, get it. If you don't need a lot of detail, just download the 2K version. If you're just learning, you're not doing anything serious, just get the 2K version. It saves you a lot of space in your hard drive. And um, that's the basics of UV mapping right there. Uh, that's just what it looks like when you when you move things around and, and change it. You can, of course, let's go back to our cube. You can, of course, uh, with all the faces selected, hit the letter U. And there's other unwrapping options. There's Smart UV Project. There's uh, Cube Projection, which all the faces are on top of each other. They're all the same. There's other weird things like Cylinder. <laughs> that doesn't look great. There's Sphere, also not great for cubes. There's just basic unwrap, which doesn't do anything. You can do reset to make them, again, all the faces are on top of each other, which I like that for some for some things. Let's go back to the shader editor, and I'm going to show you something cool that I've done with my Blender. I added an add-on called Material Library VX, and this allows me to save and load uh, other shader setups that I've made. They may be PBR, which means they're image-based maps. Some of them are procedural. Uh, you can even do volumetric ones. Uh, so let me load some that I've that I've made. So here's one that has a really cool techno look to it. And I forgot where I got these images offline, but they are beautiful. And you can see there are five images here. There's the color, there's the metallic, there's the roughness, displacement, and normals. So all combined into the principled shader makes this great photorealistic looking thing, which of course all these are totally tweakable. If you use color ramp, I can uh, really customize how reflective it is or how rough it is. If it's extra rough or if it's flat and plastic, you know, I can do that and now it's not very shiny except for the few portions that are still black. So, uh, or I can flip, I can reverse the colors and, you know, get all kinds of interesting mixtures of effects. Here's another one that's pretty cool. So the node set up over here, I got fancy and colorized the different image nodes. Um, and now the mapping over here is not great. The mapping, the UV mapping is not good. So I could probably fix that by uh, doing reset there we go. It's nothing but rivets. <laughs> you never know when you need some metal studs. There are all kinds of other cool PBR shaders that are pre-made, which are, uh, again, based on images from that website mostly. There's a few other websites I found, uh, but CCO Textures is probably the easiest and best to use. So I encourage you to play around with the image maps, play around with color ramps and other node setups. Uh, watch other videos that, that kind of focus in on specific elements of, of node editing and texture making, because when you have really great textures in your scenes, everything is going to look so much better. And you'll also be saving yourself a lot of time if you use the Material Library VX uh, plugin to basically save and load pre-made textures. Well, I hope you learned something awesome from this video. Write me if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and you have a great week.